Hi, I'm Sam Benyakov. In this electronic bits, I'm going to demonstrate how the closed loop response of a current feedback amplifier can be easily obtained. Now, a current feedback amplifier includes input terminals. The positive input goes into a unity gain amplifier, unity voltage gain amplifier. It's a buffer, while the negative input is actually connected to the output of this amplifier. R sub B is actually the output impedance or resistance of the unity gain amplifier. Now the current flowing in this resistor is then reflected to a current source which feeds an impedance Z that can be described by some general resistance and general capacitance in this area and the voltage developed across this Z is then translated by the buffer at the output to obtain the current that is needed for the load. Now in a previous electronic bits I've shown that any amplifier being a voltage feedback amplifier or a current feedback amplifier can be represented by a general block diagram, which in its heart is very similar to the negative feedback block diagram that everybody is familiar with. But in order to make it more general and applicable to all configurations, including the current feedback amplifier, we do need to include a G block which is the transfer ratio between the input, the actual input, and the summing point at the input. Now, it was shown in previous electronic bits that we can divide the response of this system into two areas. One area is when the loop gain, beta A open loop, is much larger than one. And in this case, the when beta is much larger than one, then one can be of course neglected. A open loop is divided out and we get a response of G over beta. We are left with the sign of the amplifier, uh, which takes into account uh, whether it's a inverting or a non-inverting amplifier. Now when the beta A, the loop gain, is much smaller than one, then it can be neglected and we are left with G times A open loop, which is in this case, and this is actually beyond the normal operation region uh, of the system. Now, how can we apply this to the current feedback amplifier? Suppose we have a non-inverting amplifier shown here. In this case, we have a voltage divider at the output and then a feedback going into the uh, input terminals. Now, assume in this case that the Z is composed of a resistor, one megohm, and a capacitor, 10 picofarad. In this case, we assume that R1, which is this resistor, is one kilo ohm, R2 is 100 ohm. So what we are trying to do now is to get the bandwidth or the actually closed loop response of this amplifier. Now let's start off by plotting the Z, but this will be in a local rating scale, very similar to dB, except that what we actually plot is 20 log ohms. So in this case, since at low frequency, the impedance is basically the resistor of one megohm, 20 log 10 to the sixth is 120. So this is 120, 20 log ohm referred to one ohm. Now, since we have a uh, 10 picofarad capacitor, total capacitance, and we can find the breakpoint, which is one over two pi, R equivalent and uh, C equivalent. And in this case, it comes to be uh, 16 kilo. So we have now um, this Z plotted out. Next stage is to plot one over beta. As it turns out, 
for a current feedback amplifier, one over beta equals two R one. Those who are unfamiliar with this, please go back and look at the previous electronic bits. It's explained there. So in this particular case, R one is one K, which is ten to the third. Twenty log ten to the third is sixty. This is not dB. This is twenty log ohms. So we have a crossover point here, which turns out to be beta a open loop equal to one. This is the crossover point. So for region below this crossover point, beta a is larger than one, and for this region, beta a open loop is smaller than one. So now we have to see what is g, and we can plot it out. G in this particular case, uh, by definition, g is the current flowing through Re as a function of the input voltage. So in this particular case, g is approximately 1 over R1 in parallel to R2. Well, we can make it more accurate by adding RE, but RE is, of course, a small number. So this will be G. Now, for the region beta A larger than 1, the solution is G time over beta. So we have to multiply G by 1 over beta, which will be this line here. Well, let me erase what is not necessary. This will be G over beta. For the region above the crossover point, this is beta A smaller than 1, the solution is G times A open loop. So we have to multiply G by this A open loop, which is Z in this case, and we get this value here. So by this, we get the full response of the amplifier over all frequencies. And uh, of course, when beta A, which is this region here, is larger than 1, this is the region where the amplifier behaves like an ideal amplifier with a very large uh, loop gain. And in this case, actually, the solution can be guessed um, ahead and it'll be equal to R1 plus R2 over R2, which is the gain of a non-inverting amplifier. This concludes this electronic bits presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.